we were meant to create. Sometimes our desires to create are blocked spiritually, mentally, emotionally, or even physically. And this prevents us from reaching our highest aspirations. If you are an entrepreneur or you would like to become one and you're in need of some sage advice and direction, then you're in the right place. As a successful entrepreneur, spiritual guide, and intuitive business coach, I can offer you the clarity and support you need to find success and reach your goals. With decades of experience as a trusted tarot card reader, a franchise owner, my practical and spiritual approach to entrepreneurship will help you reach your full potential as an established business owner. Whether you're struggling with making tough decisions or simply trying to find your path in life, I can help you learn the tools you need to create your business dream. Take some time today and schedule your free consultation with me so that we can begin to make your business dreams a reality. Okay, hello, 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 Aquarius. It's L here to do an urgent reading for you. Urgent, urgent, it's urgent. Get in here, please listen to this reading. <laughs> no. Um, it is urgent, but it's also, it's relative. It's relative to the time. It's relative to what's going on. It's just relative, you know. Um, some of you have questions. Hopefully, this reading will answer your questions. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Thank you, God, for blessing each and every Aquarius who comes through the reading with a clear, concise message from you. Aquarius, I do want to mention to you um, some candles uh, that I have on my website. I'm, I'm mentioning it because... I have a, so um, I did get a few orders and uh, one of the people who ordered is also going to be in the KTMG monthly conference call. So these candles are definitely going to help uh, that individual manifest. Okay. So we've got the money candle. It's got the bay leaves in it. It's got the allspice. It's got the gold flakes. Um, all good stuff. Okay. And then we have the blessing candle, the white blessing candle. We got this, uh, the live or, uh, sage there. We've got the, um, yeah, the sage we've got lavender also. So that's really good in terms of blessing, blessing for yourself, blessing for others, blessing to come into your life. And then we have the love candle. We got rose petals. We have also potpourri. So love, this is self love with the pink candle here. Um, and then we have the protection candle. So get involved in this. Definitely at, the, at this time, we got the black tourmaline. I'm not sure if you can see it. And then we also have the rosemary uh, showing up there for you too. So get involved in purchasing these candles. They are affordable. They are on the website. I will link it below. Um, yeah, purchase the candles. Get involved in uh, uh, the monthly conference call. And let's manifest together, okay? Let's manifest our dreams. It's more to life than life and existence. Uh, it's more to life than just a karmic partner and trying to get somebody to be with you or the, playing games with one another, okay? Because that's what I'm getting tonight. It's a lot of game playing. Um, okay, so they said we're going to start off with this deck. So... Aquarius, uh, it is Mercury retrograde. It is the beginning and the shit has already hit the fan and it is starting. So when we talk about Mercury retrograde, we talk about Mercury, the planet of Mercury, which is all about messages. It's the winged messenger. So this means it talks about fast messaging or messages, fast messages. Okay. There we go. Mercury retrograde. Um, we also talk about the mental, you know, how someone is thinking. But if something is in retrograde, that's going backwards. So people are thinking back to the past, back to the future. They think they're in that movie, right? So there's somebody here who wants to connect with you, whether it's a romantic partner, family member, uh, old business. Things are coming back up. Things are going backwards. And people are thinking in that manner, too. And you, so what, during Merc Mercury retrograde, you don't want to take everything 
at face value. You kind of want to look deep. Why are they reaching out? Why, why now? Why come? You know, I know as kids, we say, um, why, why are they wanting to talk to you now? Why are they wanting to make it, make it work now? What will happen when Mercury goes direct? When people start have having forward thinking, when they're thinking about uh, the future, are you involved in it? Will you be involved in it then? So let's talk about Mercury retrograde because you're going to have some people reaching out to you, Aquarius, and the uh, universe wants you to be strong in your convictions and what you will accept and not accept. Okay. So let's see. Um, you've got hobbies coming out. All right. So I, I immediately got that. Somebody feels like you're a hobby. Okay. It's fun. It's fun to jump in and out of your life. Like they play a hopscotch with you in this relationship. They may even like your body, body changes. You may even feel something within your body that something is shifting. The dynamic is shifting. The energy is different. This person could be trying to manipulate your energy. You may have put up all kinds of energetic boundaries. You may have even blocked this person literally and physical and physically. This person is really trying to knock down those walls here because their mind is going backwards. Okay. And it is, and you're coming up as their mind is thinking backwards. Right. And, um, just imagine what happens when Mercury girl goes direct. Are they going to, are you, is it going to be the same, you know, outcome, the same result, them running away or you running away or their relationship breaking down or it just being chaotic. It just seems as, yeah, it was like, um, maybe you moved or you moved on or you need to make a move. Um, someone is moving really fast towards you also because they look at you as something to do something to play with You're a hobby. You, they like your body. They like what you bring. They may like your energy, especially with this being a lot of orange here. They like, uh, maybe they like your sexual chemistry. They may even manifest from your energy when you're in their life. Good things happen. They get the job. They get more money. They look better. Other women or men are now after them. It's something about you. It, and, and the cards are asking you, Aquarius, be true to you. What do you want? Now, how can I make this person happy or how can I keep them in my life? No, be true to you. Don't falter. Don't concede. Don't give in. Don't make concession for it. Don't say, well, I guess this is as good as it gets. They are coming back, so they must love me. Uh-uh, no. We're not doing that. No settling. No concession. It is what it is. If they're not coming back in, in a you know, uh, fully healed, leave them where they are. Yeah. You need to do some grief work. Okay. You need to grieve this relationship. This person also could be grieving you, missing you. Um, somebody needs counseling therapy, whether it's you or the other person, don't ever be afraid to go and talk to somebody. Keep in mind that therapists, uh, psychologists, counselors, uh, people of those sorts, they help with the past and life coach, business coach, uh, fitness coach, they help with the now, you know, so figure out what you need help with, whether it's both. Some of you need to be focused on self. I'm getting, this is self-employment, but some of you just need to be focused on self right now because you're too focused on everything else, everybody else. How can I make this person happy? How can I keep them in my life? How can I do this? How can I do that? <clears throat> you need to exercise a new program in your life and especially with this person who's going to show back up just to play with you make sure you're grounded you're rooted and grounded in religion or some type of spirituality religion is just something that you do on a, a routine basis so what is what do you do religiously do you wake up and pray do you wake up and meditate do you eat healthy what are you doing to uh, raise your frequency your vibration what do you do religiously in order to, you know, catapult your spirituality to the next level? What do you do? And you need to have some type of spiritual practice because when they come back, you don't need to go lean on, um, maybe your emotions or your girlfriend or your guy friend. You need to be able to, you know, go deep within yourself, listen to your intuition, have a minute, pray, be ready, be ready for the bullshit. Okay. Um, that's, this is what I'm getting. I'm going to pull from a different deck here. What do we have coming up for the Aquarius? Because Mercury retrograde is here and the shit has already started. Yeah. So these cards just fell out. Oh, so you got swift, fast change happening for you. Um, dreams coming true. Uh, this could even be you moving, moving house. You did have moving. That literally talks about a move, uh, a moving away from, you know, toxic 
people, situations, job, whatever. Um, it's happening fast for you though. It, some, the opportunity presents itself. And as you can see in this card, these people just kind of, uh, there's a glare, but let's see if I can get it over here without the glare. Anyhow, these people just like threw some things in their car. They weren't even like super organized and they didn't have like this orchestrated moving team and this and that. It was like opportunity present itself and you were out. You're like, I'll come back or I'll send for the rest of my shit, but I need to leave. This could be what is happening um, in regards to your life outside of a particular person. Wishes, dreams coming true. Again, religion and spirituality. You could be like... um. This is a God number two change. So there's something happening within yourself, within your spirituality, within the spiritual realm. It's like you're heightening yourself or you're heightening or your spiritual team is heightened around you or there's a lot of protection or there's a lot of change. Um, maybe your intuition is now even heightened. Uh, psychic abilities are heightened. Um, the distant horizons. It's like maybe you could see far. Maybe now you can see the future. I don't know. You could be a seer. You could be anything. It's just more so you hone it down on your gifts, opportunity to do so. But then you also have the adversary. You have somebody coming in and trying to take you off your journey, off your path here. So be uh, weary of that. Be cautious of that. These both reduce into a nine. You're like at the, um, yeah, this is 36. And then we got the nine here. You're the end of something. You're the end. And it's like, you're leaving this behind. You're leaving the old, your old self sabotaging uh, energy, uh, habits behind, you know, maybe you would get, get going good. You know, you would get into a good regimen, you know, whether that is health or it was like, okay, I'm not dealing with this person or this group of people anymore. It's just not best for me. Um, in the past, you would get on this new bandwagon and it was good for you. It was better for you. And maybe allow certain people or one particular person to come and upset all of the good that you have done or were doing within yourself. And so then when they would leave, because they will leave, um, you find yourself back at scratch, you know, back at, uh, you know, uh, back at start, having to start over, having to gain clarity again, having to pick yourself up again. But Aquarius, I'm feeling like some of you are going to leave situations out in the cold. If you are, you need to type that down in the comment section. I'm leaving that out in the cold. If you know that somebody's coming back to you doing Mercury retrograde, only time will tell if they're, uh, if they're really real about this. And I would, this is my own personal, uh, uh, person philosophy. I would wait until after retrograde. If I know that me and this person had a challenging relationship, I would wait until after retrograde. That was, that's what I would do. Now you can do anything you want to do. Um, but that is just my advice. That is not advice of the cards. I didn't see it in the cards. I'm just saying that's my advice. I would just wait because, um, everybody's mind is just like ticking, ticking backwards. Like my mind, your mind, everybody's mind, everything is like, you know, um, dyslexic, you know, and people are stumbling over words. Shit ain't working. Cars blowing out this, that, and the third, everything is going on. So it's just about, um, wait, wait until Mercury goes direct because then people are going to be very direct and, and forward, forward in what they want. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. Sudden wealth Aquarius, whatever you're manifesting right now, this is the 11th house. You, you go, this is not the 11th house. This is an 11 card. You govern the 11th house. So big dreams, wishes coming to uh, fruition, large groups of people, internet, uh, technology. So something about suddenly you get a big ass dream. Suddenly you get, um, maybe wealth. You could be seeing seven, seven, seven. It could be significant for you. You could be seeing the number 11. Um, it talks about manifestation. Let's talk about it. Aquarius. Wow. It could be in your um, okay. This card wanted to fall on the floor. It can be in your occupation. Uh, so this would be work that you do independently, right? From a corporate setting, from a large corporation. If you don't have your own business or you don't have a side hustle, then this is just you being occupied with yourself by yourself. And it looks like you get some wish fulfillment. Um, 
yeah, you get to go on a new path here. People who are not close to you or some of these people who didn't like you, they're going to come back and try to wish you well, maybe even befriend you or um, they want to be close to you now. Um, like making enemies your footstool. It's like, you know, you'll have them at use or if you need to use them. Um, the journey here, you may even be traveling over the road. You may be... Um, also on a new journey, a new, new page, new chapter turn here. Somebody may even be coming towards you. This is somebody, here they go. This is somebody, this could even be a masculine energy. It doesn't mean that it's a man. It's just a masculine energy. So it, it's six masculine signs, six uh, feminine. So you just figure out where you are and where your person is. Um, this is a person where the relationship was hard work. It was toil and labor. They may have put all of the work on you. All right. And they're coming back as a false person, maybe trying to create a false narrative as to why they, they're showing back up in your life. Um, they could also just be coming for sex, sex aggression. Um, they could also be coming with hidden motive or ulterior motive. They're mysterious about what you're doing, how you're making money or what you're doing or who you're doing it with. This is somebody who's wearing a mask here. They're just absolutely false. Um, it could be again, a man for some of you, and it could just be a masculine energy. This is somebody who didn't really want to make a commitment to you. All right. Yeah. They didn't really want to make a commitment to you. They wanted to be in your life on their terms. Um, they can easily walk in and walk out. This is somebody, um, who didn't want to commit to anybody. Yeah. They'd be giving you like a little cute, little good news message, maybe in seven days, seven hours. I don't feel like it's seven weeks though. So we're getting seven days, seven hours, something like that. Seven minutes. I don't know. Uh, I'm, it's out of the blue, this unexpected message here. They want you to take the bait though. This person could be wealthy. All right. Um, or they could be, this could be you Aquarius, or they're wondering if you are dealing with somebody who's wealthy, does this person have more money than them? Yeah. They're concerned about who you're with, who is occupying your time. They're concerned about if you're going to, um, give your time, your energy. I heard your wound to somebody else. So somebody even could be concerned about, are you pregnant? Are you going to get pregnant by someone else? Someone is really concerned about the future fortune to almost, you know, future. So they're concerned about maybe what is happening in your future, or especially if they're not a part of it. Yeah. Cause they're in a place of, uh, despair. You might have put them out. They're in a place of wanting to come out of the cold. This is reduces to a five. So you may have, um, cut off communication. You may have uh, said, this isn't working for me there. This person could be experiencing a setback. Also, this is somebody who you can see you getting a lot of attention, a lot of money. Um, they see you happy. They see you shining. Your aura is bright. It could be yellow. Um, this is a person who is in complete despair and they want you to come and take them out of this. Yep. Look, you're showing up as a main female and they're showing up as a thief. And some of you are already expecting for this person to come back and try to have sex with you and act like they want a relationship, but you've already got wise counsel in regards to what this person is up to and what their thoughts of are, what their thoughts of you are. They want to come back to you and give you this small petty offer. Okay. Um, Oh, can't even make petty. This card talks about pesky, petty little things, details. So this card, they could be trying to come back and give you this small little petty offer, maybe even a petty apology. Um, they may even be trying to brush, uh, big issues that you guys had under the rug or sweep it under the rug, or they may be trying to reduce major issues down to, you no, know, they, they want to minimize, um, they want to minimize the bigger problems and they want to maximize the pesky little details. So you can always kind of spot a narcissist because they'll do that. So this is somebody who will minimize the larger issues in the relationship and then they'll maximize the smaller issues. So if you say, well, I had well, the last time I talked to you, you ghosted me. I didn't hear from you and I made it my business not to reach out to you. This person will say, well, you got a phone too. You could have called me. Okay. First of all, that is a true statement, but that is, that is the least of, of our worries right now. You ghosted me. Yeah. I was under the impression that you, we were going to hang out or you were going to reach out to me or, you know, you just left it where it was. And so did I, and you've done this before. This person will come up with all kinds of pesky, small, little 
um, details to maximize. Like, oh, well, um, you could have texted me or um, you know that I'm busy or you know that I work. But they won't ever really address the fact that they ghosted you. They never, they never reached out. They never attempted to do so. They'll never address the fact of where they were, what they were doing. Uh, why didn't they ever reach out? So you, that, that is um, quintessential narcissistic behavior. So you can kind of spot those people. This person could be in despair and stuck on you because they know that you're about to come into maybe a, a marriage and you're a privileged lady. You, you don't need them for shit. They're stuck on you, okay? Imprisonment. The only way you can be stuck on somebody, and this reduces to an 11, so this is about manifestation. They manifested this mental imprisonment because the only way you most people get stuck on somebody is when they know they fumble the relationship. They messed up. They did something wrong. They, uh, they um, you know, talk bad about you or talk bad to you. It's like when, at, at the let's say a loved one passes, right? And um, everybody goes to the funeral service and the person that's screaming and wailing the loudest might have been the person that treated that person absolutely horrible when they were alive. Now you're crying over somebody's dead body when you know you were horrible to them when they were alive. And, and, and that is guilt. That is shame. There's regret. There's remorse. It's definitely guilt. And somebody's in this mental prison because when the relationship was alive, they treated you like shit and now it's dead and they're stuck on you. Um, so that's what's going on. Some of you are about to be, get gifted with a home, um, major success, abundance, public recognition. You could have a big ass wedding. If you do get married, you may even move into a big ass house with somebody who's mature and ready for a relationship. You may be telling this person it is over. It is done. We can never get back together. You have not matured. You have not healed. Um, yeah, they could be keeping secrets, family secrets. They wanted you to hear them out, but they ain't got shit to say. Every time you give them an opportunity, nothing to say. Uh, Aquarius, let me, um, where are we going to go? Okay, so let's go here. No, let's do this one. Um, so let's see what is going on. Oh, oh, they said this one. Okay. Um, so let's do this one. Oh, this popped out of the deck. Cancer. So you can be dealing with the cancer. Uh, whether this, this is a loved one, a romantic partner, or whomever. So a cancer could be trying to come back um, and uh, maybe they're having nostalgic thoughts, okay, about you, all right? Um, they could be nocturnal too, up late at night, maybe thinking about you. Sentimental, you know, leftover residual feelings about their relationship. Um, they could be family introverted. They could be caring, moody, protective. They could be intuitive, you know. They want you to be uh, sympathetic to their needs, okay? Um, let's see what else is happening for you, um, Aquarius. Can we gain some more information? Conjunction, yeah. You just stepped into your power. Um, look and see in your birth chart what um, planets and houses are in conjunction because this is you combining. It's like strength. You're gaining strength and forces. It's like you're coming to an understanding of who you really are. Um, whatever this was or whatever it is, it is overwhelming you. And this person could be overwhelmed with, um, you know, shame, regret, remorse also. So they could have, it could be the adverse for them in their houses. Maybe they are um, needed to double down on maybe relationships or treatment or how they treated someone or maybe just uh, doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. 12th house surrender. So this might be over. It might be done. You've learned lesson. This is Saturn. Um, it took a long ass time, but you are here. You are done. You could have dealt with my 12 months, 12 years or more on um, your subconscious. Okay. Akashic records. Yeah. Again, I can't make it up guilt. So this person is really, um, surrendering to the guilt. They, they treated you like shit. They want forgiveness. Karma is happening to them. They want you again to be compassionate with them. Um, baggage. They're holding on to shit. They need healing. They need some spiritual awareness. It could be you Aquarius. All of this could be, you know, turned around cross watchers. So just flip it, reverse it, whatever. Get your Missy Elliott on. Um, Sagittarius. So there could be another person, the Voyager. So, uh, this could be in your chart or this could be another person here 
who wants to come towards you because we did have somebody trying to journey towards you. Um, this person could be kind of like astro projection, astro uh, traveling to you. Um, again, uh, energy of trying to penetrate your energetic aura, your field, maybe at night when your mind is kind of at rest. It's like that's when they know that they can talk to you or they can try to talk to you. They're going to take some risk and try to travel to you. Yep. Now they want to be honest. They want to be generous with you. It could be a trick, though. Um, let's see what else is happening uh, for Aquarius. What else is going on for the Aquarius? I can't make it up. Saturn, you come into wisdom. How do you gain wisdom? You already been through something. You learned the lesson there. Therefore, when it comes back to you again, you you, you draw from that uh, memory bank and you make a, a different uh, choice, a different decision here. Wisdom. So you're disciplined now. You got structure and you're disciplined with your time. Uh, responsibility. It's just a test. I'm telling you, Aquarius, this person coming back to you, trying to reach out to you, uh, woo you, sway you, tell you that they love you, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a test. It's a test of your self-control. It's a, te a test of what you say you really want, of your maturity. Chiron can't make it up. So this person, um, healing, healing powers. Somebody can want to come back to you because they feel like you have healing powers. You got healing waters, whether you're a woman or a man. I don't know. Maybe the wop, the wound, something like that. Somebody, when somebody is, you know, entangled with you, if you will, you know, they feel that healing vib vibration. You also may just have healing in your voice, just in your soul, just in your very being, the essence of you. Um, you hear of a problem, you jump right into action, especially for those that you love, you like, you respect. Um, this person wants that. Uh, they want you to be sensitive to their needs. They may have gone through some generational trauma or this was you, um, some inherited issues. It's like you're really letting it go and you're releasing. Wow. I, before I even said that you're making amends with yourself and maybe even other people, you may even kindly tell this person to move on. You know, it's done. It's over. I don't have what you're looking for and you don't have what I'm looking for. It's time to just move on. It really is. It's time. All right. So let's see what else is going on. For you, Pluto, that's what I'm saying. You're completely transforming. Transformation happening. I heard seventh house, so maybe in relationships, um, interpersonal connections. So how you deal with other people. Now you may, you're transforming. Maybe in the past, you used to blow up at people, curse them out because they treated you wrong. You wanted them to feel like you felt. You wanted to dog them out. You transform. Like this is renewal, inner healing. Your basic instinct has shifted. You don't, you, you don't necessarily go right to let me just tell this person off because they deserve it. It's more so let me fall back and not speak because silence speaks volumes. So it's like you shifted something within yourself, clearing extremes. I can't make it up reckoning. So you reckoning with yourself, uh, reasoning with yourself. Also extremes. You don't go to the extreme anymore. Um, it's just like, you know how to reserve yourself and your energy. Yeah. When challenges arrive, when somebody's trying to square you. So if somebody here trying to create tension in your life, once again, you got to question somebody's motivation, um, question that demon behind this person coming back up in your life to take you off your, your uh, path of healing, a uh, resurrection of yourself being resurrected or, um, not even resurrected, but redeemed or brought back to brought back in the fold of a uh, universal God spirit so that you can be used so that you can get on the right path so that you can find life purpose, soul purpose. It's like somebody's really trying to obstruct that. They're not trying to help you get on to that. So if you bring this person back into your life and you're talking about healing and how you become, you're trying to become a better person and you want to get in your life purpose, they'll look at you like you're crazy because it's not what they were sent for. They were sent to, uh, I heard take back to destroy, to, to deconstruct. Okay. They're not helping you construct anything yet. Yeah, outlook. That's what I'm talking about. Worldview mission statement, uh, point of view back to aura. Your aura is different. You're shifting, you're changing your effect on your likeness, your first impression. People are seeing light around you. They see light in your face. They see youth about you or youthful vibe about you. They see, um, positivity, uh, radiance, um, that only, you know, God source angels, uh, divine white light can give you. Okay. So, um, some of you are really shifting your energy and all that's coming back is those demonic forces, uh, or this person allowing themselves to be used by demonic forces. If we can keep Aquarius off their path, if we can keep Aquarius stuck on small stuff and sweating the small stuff, then they'll never walk into uh, their life purpose. They'll never help awaken other people. They'll never do it. Because they're too focused on, you know, is this my karmic soulmate? Venus, love, love for self. 
um, get you some, get one of these pink, uh, self-love candles. Go ahead. It's only three fifty. Okay. Um, go ahead and, and purchase your pink self-love candle, burn it every night uh, until it's gone. Uh, attraction. I'm telling you magnetism, indulgence, pleasure, adornment, luxury, and wealth, uh, diplomacy. Now you're, you're being diplomatic. You don't have time for the argument and the drama. It is what it is. You said what you said. It's done. I get it. And that's how you're feeling about certain situations, especially people trying to show back up, pop back up from the past, doing Mercury retrograde. What do you really want, sir or ma'am? It's not even even for you to ask that. You know, again, justice happening here for you, Aquarius. Uh, so it looks like a decision will be made. Um, you won't be swayed by beauty. You won't be swayed by muscles. You won't be swayed by money. You won't be swayed by sex. Um, justice. You're going to make the right decision for yourself firstly. And, and then you're going to see a uh, cause and effect. If you pass this test, because we know this is a test. Saturn came out with Chiron. Um, we know it's a test, right? And when you pass this test, cause and effect. If you just say no, if you didn't resist the devil and, and uh, he or she flees, um, then you'll get uh, karma here, cause and effect. You'll get what is due unto you. Um, you'll be opened up or the gates of heaven open to you. All right, Aquarius. That's what I'm saying. It's like somebody's trying to come back into your life and bind you. It could be a Gemini or somebody who plays both sides or they're running from one relationship to over here with you or trying to get with you. This could be somebody who is allowing themselves to be used by demonic forces. The Knight of Swords, the Seven of Wands is somebody coming to you trying to, um, again, Leo, a destructive influence. Okay, so somebody's trying to destruct whatever you constructed, that boundary, those, um, that wall you built up against energy that just doesn't serve you, that adds no value to you. They want to tear it down. They want to destruct it. They want to come in like a wrecking ball and they want to have sex with you. The seven of wands talks about trying real hard to get somebody's attention and maintain it. So this person not only wants your attention, but then they want you to, they, they're trying to maintain your attention, your affection on them. It feeds them. This is somebody who's got a big ass ego and they love you feeding their ego. Temperance card. It could be a Sagittarius. Um, it also could be somebody here doing some spell, doing some potion work, or I don't know. This is somebody who could even try to put something in your drink. This is a manipulative energy. Okay, Aquarius, as I said that, my right ear started to um, itch a little bit, so that could be a yes answer. Watch out what you drink, what you eat around this person. Yeah, they might be trying to get you woozy, uh, two of pentacles, trying to get you to weigh the pros and the cons, give them a chance. Um, look over here. Don't look over there. Um, act as if they're changing the juggler on stage, knowing that people are watching. So that's your person. They know that you're watching the ass. So it's like, let me act like I've changed. Let me act like I'm changing. Yeah. The page of pentacles coming back with a small offer, offer of nothing, offer of, um, nothingness, uh, words lack of consistency yeah four of cups um self-centeredness uh also this is a person who's depressed okay so they need to pick me up in you in in their depression and then them being by themselves the ace of swords they seeing that you're the one you're the one that has the the better energy the positive energy you're the one that has the love you're the one that has um maybe the looks the fun uh you're funny um you, you can pick them up yeah, you can heal them, the four of swords. This is definitely maybe from a masculine to a feminine energy. And it could be the other way around. This is somebody here who like knows that this is make it or break it time. Last ditch effort. Like um, if I don't come towards the Aquarius and say something, do something, this might be the end. But at the same time, they, they like to take breaks from you or breaks from your life. And they'd like to come back with the four of swords here. They always thought it was, it was going to be temporary. Like I was going to eventually show back up Aquarius. Yep. With the six of swords, but you may be moving on or they feel like you're moving on in secrecy and silence. It hasn't really been like, um, this 10 of swords, like energy that they felt because maybe you kept the lines of communication open just a bit, but you deal with them different. You communicate different because you're moving on in secrecy secrecy and silence okay so you're not yelling excuse me you're not yelling at this person that oh i'm moving on i'm done with you i you know no none of that because you learn how to govern yourself and transform your energy and be a, a diplomat diplomacy 
and how you do things. Therefore, this was like a gradual moving on. You just don't want the headache anymore. Therefore, you deal with them differently. When they come at you with pettiness, because we do we did have pettiness, we had um peskiness, or just being pesky energy. You just meet them with maturity. Oh, I'm busy right now. I'll get back to you. It's, it's just different how you, you talk to them or the cards are saying, this is how you need to be. Once again, six of swords, you're leaving that self-sabotaging, self-sacrificing energy behind where you just make concession for, where you just make up reasons as to why you should, why I should talk, why I should give them another try, why I should invite them over, why I should give them more money, why I should go over here. No, you don't do that anymore because you know it gets you nowhere. It's um, like backwards, it's like five of swords type of energy. So some of you have come to the place of just moving on the six of swords. You've reconciled within yourself because the six of swords can talk about reconciling, either coming back together and reconciling or reconciling within yourself that it ain't going to work. It ain't going to never work. It wasn't meant to work. This was meant to come into my life to show something to me about myself um, so that I can move on. Staying stuck on this energy, staying stuck on this timeline. Huh, I'll wake up and I'll be 50, I'll be 60, I'll be 70 years old. I'm still talking about a karmic uh, twin flame. Um, asking tarot card readers, uh, is he cheating? I don't know about you, but I don't, never, I don't want to be there. I don't know. And if you don't want to be there, raise your hand down in the comment section. Who wants to be that old? Talking about a karmic... Uh, a twin flame, soulmate, life partner. Come on. It's almost as if you, you wasted your life. I hate to say it, but I mean, come on, don't, don't get stuck. It's like the universe is like pulling all Aquarius together to manifest better, make better choices. The sum total of all these setbacks are your choices. Nobody was putting nothing on you. It was what you were choosing. Nobody can do anything to you that you don't allow. It was what you were choosing. Make better choices, get better outcomes. What is the end result? Have one, have um, non-negotiables. You don't negotiate with terrorists that come in your life and try to make you think that this is okay, that you need to accept subpar behavior. This is BS Aquarius right now. This day, this is a test, pass the test. Tell that person no. Tell them okay. You don't even have to go into how you're gonna you're gonna be an ascendant person and you're gonna do this and you I don't you swimming in the astral plane. You no. All you have to do is just say you have to just deal with them different. You have to communicate different. When you communicate different, people pick up on the vibration and they're either gonna get with it or they're gonna get lost. Okay. If this person hit you with a little bullshit. Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. Not I'm fine and you and where you at and what you do. Uh, -uh I'm fine. So now you, you're forcing this person to come out of ego, really show themselves. If, if it's, if it's really that you love me and you want to be with me and you miss me and all of this stuff and you, my soul made and twin flame and you've come to an awakening, then you'll, you'll fight for me. But if it's some BS, which it might be because it's Mercury retrograde, when you meet them with a different disposition, they'll flee. Resist the devil and he shall, she shall, they shall flee. Because um, I'm tired of reading this stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and be honest. I'm tired of reading uh, all this karmic stuff and people wanna know, is he cheating, is he lying? Yes, if you gotta ask the question, the answer is yes. What are you gonna do about it? If nothing, what do you just wanna be in the know? I mean, shit, uh, uh, oblivion is bliss. Just act like you don't know and just continue to have fun, right? I would if I was lower vibrational. Seven of cups, six of pentacles, six of wands. This is what I'm talking about. Some of you are going to definitely choose yourself and bet on yourself. Seven of cups. You, when this person trying to come back and sell you this dream, this lie, could be Scorpio energy. And they're digging deep right now. Um, and they're going to try to lay it on thick. They've been fantasizing about you. Uh, wishful thinking. Um, this is somebody who's going to make all these promises to you and, and deliver none because they know you'll hold on to the promises. The six of pentacles here, yeah, give you just a little bit, a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. They also could feel like the power is in your hands now. The power dynamic has shifted because some of you are dealing with these people differently. Okay. 
and it looks like with the six of wands, you're going to choose yourself. You're going to take the high road. You're going to strut off. You know, you're going to walk off strutting your stuff. You're going to win the battle. This is a te this, this is a test. It is a battle. It is a battle uh, for your, your inspiration, your life, your determination. That's what the wands are about. Are you really determined to have the life that you say you want? Do you want that white picket fence life? Do you want that wife? Do you want that husband? Uh, what do you want? Everybody's dream is different, but what do you want? Because you ain't getting it with these people or with that person. So it's just like the universe is like, Hey, we've got so much more on the other side of this, but it's still your life. You still have free will. We're not going to upset that. So let us know what you want us to do. We're going to fall back until then. Four of pentacles. Yeah. It's like, um, somebody was still stuck, still closed, still toxic, stuck, stagnant relationship. And they, they haven't dealt with deep seated issues and they be, they, they might be trying to get you stuck. Also. Um, they also are very dominant, forceful, trying to exert their will over you. Like you do want to be in this connection with me. You do want to have sex with me. You do want to hang out with me. Didn't we used to have fun? Didn't we, you know, and it's that type of energy. It's going nowhere fast. Okay. Um, they have nothing to offer you. You see, we hadn't even really pulled, we pulled a lot of cards. Ain't no offers, ain't no knights, and, and damn sure no kings on the table. It's just a, a um, petty, pesky, drama field energy. The fool card. It says, let something new develop in your life, Aquarius. What do you have to lose? Go in a new direction. Let something new, a new development in your life. Very nice. Um, soul school, the higher offense. Somebody did want things to be like it used to be. The status quo, if we used to hook up, hang out on a weekend, that's what I want. I want nothing more and nothing less. And Aquarius, you may be coming to a place of understanding spirituality, understanding yourself, and you may be wanting to shift, change, listen to the inner voice, okay? Um, not your intuition, but that inner voice, good and bad. It tells you what's going to be good for you and what's bad for you. You need to listen to that. Yeah, because um, there's somebody here who didn't choose the soulmate journey, still not really choosing it. They know that you mean something to them, but they ain't ready to really dive deep and in, in into that type of relationship. They, they can't give you what you want. It's kind of like they're in the energy. It is what it is. They like playing with you. They don't want to sin. They're not spiritual. Okay. Uh, their job is to fuck up your business and what you got going on. They're in the lack mentality. Okay. Um, they could, they could even be lacking a home or homeless, or they feel like you are their home. Again, they could feel like you started something new with a newborn baby. Yeah. Marriage. And you're about to be a mom. Damn Aquarius. That's on the other side of telling this person, no, because you are meet your soulmate, your life partner, your twin flame, your everything wrapped up in one. But the universe is like, we're not going to bring that person to you. If you still telling this bum, yes. Because you messed up the, the uh, soulmate twin flame that we're bringing into you. You messed this person over. And we ain't in the business of messing people over. I don't know if the, if the divine put out a new memo, email, that they're in the business of bringing unhealed soulmate twin flames together so that they can mess over each other. No. That's karma. That's what you were born into. That's what you should be ascending out of and going to your North and all. But some of you are praying for your person, but you don't do, want to do the work and you won't want to come out of negativity, drama, uh, toxic relationships, but you keep praying for a soulmate and a twin flame. What you going to do? Fuck that person over. I mean, literally you've been fucked over. You haven't healed your fucked over. And then now you want a twin flame. So what does that equal? It equals fuck over. Yeah, come on. This is not rocket science. You know, one plus one is two. One fuck over plus one fuck over equals now two fuck over. So don't do it. And, and heal. Take some time to heal. Some of you want to break up with somebody last week and you want to have a twin flame next week. It don't work like that. I wish it did, but it doesn't work like that. You got to now go through all that healing. You got to dig deep. You got to go in the past. You got to bring up stuff with your mama, with your daddy, with your sister, with your brother, with the person that messed you over. Um, you got to deal with the stuff when you were the little kid and they used to pick on you in the schoolyard. I mean, you really have to go deep, go deep, go deep. The universe is just not in the business of giving you what you want because you say you want it. Especially if you aren't healed, do the work. 
at least have something to go before your God and say, God, I've done the work. I figured this out. I figured that out. I understood why I went through this. I forgave all these people. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I want to be in my life purpose. I told y'all about life purpose. When you get into your life purpose, everything falls into, into um, it just falls into uh, place. You don't have to do all of this um, hope and wishing and praying. If you hate your job, if you hate waking up every day, going to go see those people at that job, but you're praying for um, a divine masculine, divine feminine, you're praying for an escape and you want it to be a person when you really should be praying for life purpose. God, I hate this job. I hate these people. I don't know why I hate them. Illuminate to me why I hate this stuff. And then put me in a place where I can heal and then get in my life purpose. And then once you get in life purpose, you'll see that you don't even have to pray for the divine masculine or the divine feminine. You just go about your day, about your business, and here they are showing up in your life. If that is the will of God for your life. But you guys want to have it backwards. I want, I want to hate my family, hate my job, hate the car I drive, hate where I live, but please send me a divine masculine and divine feminine. What the hell are you going to do? All of that hate, but you about to give some love to somebody? No, you're not. Come on. And I'm talking to you like this because you're an Aquarius. I'm talking to you like this because I've been there before and I know what escapism is. Hell, we all have done it. We all do it. We all, some of us do it on the smallest scale. You may have a whole bunch of tasks that you have to get, you know, done in one day and you get on that YouTube and you hear one thing and it makes you laugh and you listen to another thing and three hours have passed and you've done nothing. You just needed a, a quick escape before you tackle escapism. It happens from the very small to the, to the larger, to the, my life sucks, but please send me a soulmate. Yeah, crickets. God said you have not because you ask not. You're asking the wrong question. I'm going to leave you with some advice because I'm, I'm a little fired up because this Mercury retrograde, I believe it's the last of the year um, that we're going to have this year. And it's going to be significant because the God is trying, I'm like, look, I'm trying to get you into the new year and some new stuff. But if you just want to stay here, let me know. Cause you know, I can still rock with you there too. It is your life. You have free will, but, but, uh, let me know, you know, page of swords. You got somebody spying on you. You got somebody coming to you with, um, maybe a message. You also are like, shut, you need to shut down communication. Cause it's going to start an argument. You got somebody in a real depressive state. And they see you shining. Okay. So you got somebody in a depressive state. They see you shining. They want some of the shine. They want some of your energy. They want some of your love. They want some of your light. Um, they want you to heal. They want all of that. Yeah. And then the devil energy can't make it up. And the nine of swords, they're getting karma. They're in a low place. And it's like Aquarius, please take me out of this low place because you're in the queen of wands. You're manifesting, attracting all of the energy that you want to bring into your life. And they're in the devil energy. Is this really what you want? You don't want that. Type down in the comment section. I don't want that. I do not want that. Again, they're coming with a very small offer. And they're hoping that you take to it. They don't have anything else to offer. Really start to reduce things to the to the least, um, you know, common denominator to, you know, reductive reasoning. Why is this person coming back to me? Hmm. Okay. Let's write it down. Okay. Firstly, it's Mercury retrograde. All right. Great. Um, they're coming back to me because I was a really good girlfriend or boyfriend. I can tell all the things that I've done or I would do or how I showed up in the relationship, maybe even sacrificing myself and hanging myself out there. Okay. All right. That's another reason. Uh, they could be coming back to me, um, because I'm abundant. I have a lot. I have a lot more than they have. Okay. Okay. They could be coming back to me because maybe someone else F them over, they F somebody else over. Um, they can be coming back to me because they think I'm easy or that it, you know, it's easy or I'm stupid or they're getting over. Okay. They could be coming back to me because every time I'm in their life, I fix things for them. Start to write things down and read it back to yourself and it'll make sense to you. And you won't have to go to a tarot card reader. You won't have to go to a tarot card reading unless you wanted to out of entertainment. But you need to start thinking logically 
sometimes and come out of your emotions and stop wishful thinking, hopeful, being wishful and hopeful that they're going to come back to you. This heal, um, super heal, super whole being. No, for some of you, it's a no, maybe it could be a yes for a handful. It could be an absolute no for a great deal of you. Because this is the this is the age of Aquarius. This is the age of awakening. It's like the universe trying to get you awakened to you, your energy, what you bring to the table, how people need it, how people want it, when they're without it, what they'll do for it, how they'll come back. You need to know so you make the right. Some of y'all do music. And this could even be a block or a stumbling block in regards to you um, creating. You're not even creating because you're too busy thinking about this love relationship that's going nowhere fast and they'll have shit to offer you. Your page of pentacles at the bottom. You could do music. This is what I have for you, Aquarius. I'm praying that you make the right decision. Be prayerful about it when people come back and show up in your life. Um, if you don't want it, you don't want it. Be, car be, car be cautious about mercury retrograde doing you know anything in regards to love if there's anything necessary that you need to do um in regards to maybe you know fixing things signing contracts if it's necessary be prayerful about it and then move if it's necessary um in love it ain't that necessary you can wait another month right and, you know if it's real so uh it is what it is if you want to get your own personal reading just like this one go to the website book their readings are 40 percent off use code 40 off at uh, the website level um you can book a phone reading you can book a video recorded reading okay or a zoom reading if you're across the world um you can get on zoom uh what else um get your uh business uh your discovery call that is not a reading if you don't know what a discovery call is jump down to google and type it in jump on a discovery call with me if you want to um, see if I can be of assistance to you in regards to opening your own business um, uh, or uh, maintaining your business or growing your business. Um, let's see where you are. So it's intuitive business coaching. So there is a, a portion of this that is spiritual or spiritual based. It is intuitive, but um, a discovery call is not that. It's to discover where you are and how I can help you and if I can help you, okay? And if you are wanting to connect with like-minded business individuals every month, go ahead and get in on the KTMG. Keep the momentum going monthly, uh, monthly conference call where we talk about get valuable, practical and spiritual advice in regards to how to start, maintain or grow your business. Okay. So it's going to be practical and spiritual based. So you're going to get the best of both worlds. So it's 20 bucks a month. You spend 20 bucks at the blink of an eye. Go ahead. Even if you invested for one month, you spent 20 bucks on you, on your business to get valuable information that could possibly unlock how much money for you, how much freedom for you. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, all links are below. Thank you, Aquarius. Many blessings to you. Take care.